Hello guys, welcome back. So this session is uh, not about a uh, generic uh, serial protocol, protocol or event operation. Instead, it's uh, more on how to configure and transmit data through UAuth specific to the RISC-V based FE310 SOC. So this is the SOC which is present on the I-51 revision B board, which I always use. So this session would uh, start with the initial overview of the uh, UAuth features on FE310, followed by uh, pin configuration and the UAuth configuration. And uh, finally, I would uh, run a code to transmit a set of bytes and capture it on the scope to see if the bit stream that's uh, transmitted uh, matches with the waveform. Okay, so the code, whatever I use here, is already available on the GitHub repository. And also be informed that uh, this, in this, I would be using the uh, Flick uh, controller or the platform level interrupt controller and uh, uh, core interrupter, which I have already discussed previously. So I wouldn't be going uh, deep into those in this. So I recommend you to watch the suggested video above if you haven't watched those before jumping into this. Okay, so let's uh, move on. So these are the uh, features of uh, you want in FE310. So you want an FE310 can be configured in two modes. Uh, one is uh, 8N1, another one is the 8N2. So which means that uh, eight bits, no parity, and one or two stop bits. That's uh, these are the two configurations uh, supported in this you want. And it has a, a FIFO of uh, Eight deep, so eight bytes, uh, eight separate uh, byte FIFO for transmission and eight separate uh, byte FIFO for the uh, reception. Uh, but uh, we wouldn't be covering the, uh, we wouldn't be using the receive part of the UART. Uh, instead, I would be just uh, transmitting the data as I said before. So it supports the watermarking. So what does it mean? It's like on the transmit end, if I set the watermark to be four bytes, that then the and you what uh, interrupt or watermark interrupt would be generated if there aren't uh, enough bytes up to the watermark. Whereas on the receive side, uh, the watermark interrupt would be generated once uh, there are bytes available on the FIFO up to the watermark level. Okay. And uh, this is uh, FE310 supports uh, 16 times the baud rate sampling on the receive end. Uh, this is uh, this is normal, and the reason is that uh, it's very important to capture the uh, start bit on the receiver. If you miss the start bit while receiving the data, then the entire data would be lost. So that's why it supports up to. 16x uh, sampling rate and uh, data transmission order is that uh, the LSB is transmitted first or the least significant bit is transmitted first so for this uh, byte BZ uh, which is like yeah 1011 uh, 1100 would be sent as 00 followed by four ones and zero one so the LSB goes out first So the next uh, few uh, minutes will be spent on like uh, configuring the pins and uh, configuring the UART and transmitting the data and capturing it on the scope. So the pin configuration, uh, the pin map. So mostly uh, uh, it's very common nowadays uh, for any processor to have a pin multiplexed with uh, more than one functionality. Same in FE310, if you see the UART TX pin, uh, UART1 transmit pin, which is uh, GPIO18, can be used either as a UART1 transmit pin or as a general purpose IO. So this is what I mean by the pin configuration. So, and for UART uh, receive, it's uh, multiplexed with the GPIO23. 
and these are the uh, electrical characteristics and these are available on the fe310 data sheet on table 4.2 so these are not part of the manual insert these are present on the data sheet so if you want you can refer that okay so one thing i want to mention here very first is that uh, pin numbers on the schematics uh, did not match on my board i don't know if it is uh, only on this version of the board so you just uh, check or it might be the case for your board as well so in the schematics if you see the gpio 18 uh, is number three on jumper j2 so this is jumper j2 whereas the silk screen numbers on the pcb runs from zero to seven so the uart one tx or the gpo 18 on my board is uh, pin number two and uh, the ground I, i'm tapping it from the jumper three and the uh, ground was easy because i can clearly see that it's uh, clearly mentioned on that so these are the top points for my uh, scope whenever I run my code. So this uh, pin configuration would be easy to understand if you see this block diagram on the GPIO section of the manual. So if you watch this uh, GPIO or section in the manual of FE310. So each GPIO, for example, each pin has the GPIO functionality multiplexed with the IO functionality. And even among the IO functionality, sometimes the pin might be multiplexed with more than one IO functionality. We will see. I will just show an example uh, soon here. But uh, while what we are trying to do by choosing these pins as you want is that uh, if you see here so by default these pins are all uh, configured as a GPIO that's like uh, this IO IO functionality enabled bit wouldn't be enabled and IO functionality select is not also is not selected as well by default so to make this GPIO 18 as you want one first this uh, IO functional functionality should be enabled and this IOF uh, select should be set to zero or one based on the uh, IOF functionality but let's see an example here let's see what all the functions are available okay. so See, few GPIOs have more than one IYF functionality. For example, GPIO 10 pin, uh, has three functionalities. One is as a general purpose IO. It can also act as SPIO, SPI 1, chip select 3, or as PWM 2. But whereas the GPIO 18 is, uh, has just one IO functionality, so all you need to do is just uh, select enable IO, IO functionality and the select pin should be set to zero so that it would act as what one underscore TX okay so that's uh, all about the uh, pin configuration so next would be configuring the UART so at reset, the board or the clock settings on the HiFi one Ruby board is as below. So at the default value is zero for this, and uh, so this on this uh, multiplexer, this value would be set to zero. And the uh, high frequency external oscillator is the one that would be uh, used to supply the tile link TL clock, tile link clock, or the high frequency clock, or even the core clock on the board at reset. Okay, so I'm not gonna change this clock settings. That means that uh, the UART is going to be supplied with a clock of uh, 16 megahertz. That's all, that's the takeaway from this slide, okay. 
So with uh, UART clock being 16 megahertz, and I want to operate the UART at the 115200 baud rate. So in general, uh, the relation between the baud rate and the clock is like this baud rate equal to clock by some divisor. So that would result in the divisor value being 139. You can just uh, grab a calculator and you can just see here. So 16, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5. Okay, so that's approximately 139. And uh, this divisor value has to be uh, set on a register for UART. So this is the uh, FE310 manual UART uh, section. That is the register you see here. This is the register. And uh, how what value that has to be set here is, is like this. So this is the uh, I equation. So it's the one what we use. So the denominator, what we arrived as 139, that means that the divisor value should be set with 138. Okay, you can also uh, use this uh, table here, you see here. If the tile link clock is 16 megahertz to achieve uh, 115200 baud rate, the divisor should be 139. You can use this table as well. Okay, and uh, so once you arrive this divisor and once you have set the divisor uh, value, the next thing in configuring uh, any what would be number of uh, stop bits. And uh, you can just know that duration of a bit and while, while transmitting how to calculate that is that the baud rate is nothing but the bit rate in UART uh, because we are not going using any modulation or anything just uh, so in that case uh, if you calculate one one So this would be around 8.68 microseconds, so the duration of each bit. So when we uh, capture the waveform in the oscilloscope, we should be able to see that duration should be approximately this value. Okay. And uh, other than this, uh, on the TX side, you have a transmit data register where you write the value into, and then uh, the, what is the control register? So you enable, and this is where you uh, configure a number of stop bits and the watermark level. So there are three bits for this. You can set the watermark from, I don't know if it will work at uh, watermark zero and one. Zero, I don't know if it will work. So I, uh, I configured with one in the code right now, I guess. So you can set the watermark level. That means that if you set this value as five, so if the FIFO has uh, less than five bytes, then the interrupt would be generated. That means that you have to enqueue more into the FIFO so that the transmitter can smoothly transmit. And uh, another Thing I want to mention here is that generally we will be uh, clearing the pending bit in the trap routine, but here I see that once you have enqueued enough bytes are beyond the watermark level, then the interrupt pending bits would be automatically cleared. Okay, so you don't have to bother about the interrupt pending of the UART. So once we have uh, configured the pin as UART, and after configuring the UART with the uh, right side of the board rate and the watermark level, so the next thing would be to enable or configure the flick to pass those UART uh, one transmit interrupts to the uh, risk five code. Okay, so this is the this configuration alone would be very specific, uh, would be specific to a risk five. 
because the split is a risk five specification. So I have uh, discussed Plick extensively in the previous video, as uh, you can see in the suggested video above. So the four things that has to be done for uh, you what or that for you what source first to uh, find the source ID for you what so for source ID four uh, the priority has to be set and uh, the plic priority threshold the minimum priority threshold beyond which uh, the Click should forward the interrupts to the code that has to be set and interrupt claim and completion. These are the digits to be written to complete the uh, interrupt process. This has to be done in the trap. And apart from this uh, click setup uh, on the core, on the M state of CSR, the external interrupt has to be enabled because you want as an external interrupt. Okay. So now let's uh, get into the code. So on the GitHub repo, you can see that I have created a new application for UART1 transmission. So I have just duplicated the first block from the GPIO where I would just, uh, initially I would set the priority as true for all interrupts including the uart one tx then I would go down and uh, set the uart one priority alone as three so that uh, rest all interrupts would be masked because I don't want to be disturbed by the RTC or always on block interrupts, okay? Then this is a pin configuration where I configure the GPIO to be used as an IO functionality, then among the IO functionality, this pin is just one to be used as uart one tx And these are all the uh, plic configurations like uh, enabling the uart one source to pass through plic and uh, setting the threshold to two. And on the core, I enable the, uh, or on the M status CSR, I enable the uh, external interrupt. Then on the UART configuration, setting the uh, UART at 115200 baud rate and the watermark level, I have just set it as one. And uh, setting the stop bit, so here zero means one stop bit, one would, uh, would be two stop bits. And enabling the watermark interrupt. This is, this is optional, these are all not mandatory. But anyway, I have enabled, and then I am in queuing these uh, three bytes initially, like FC, F0, C0. And uh, after in queuing, I'm enabling the UART. And then in a loop, I keep transmitting uh, BC, the bytes. Uh, BC is transferred in a four hour loop. Okay, that's about the code. Now let's see. Okay, let's. Uh, build the code and run. So on the left half of the screen is my Visual Studio or File Explorer and the right side is the Logic Pro 8 uh, scope from Sailai. And let me see the settings here. So I have connected the UART 1TX pin to the digital channel 0 and this is a sampling rate. This is a uh, way more than the baud rate, and uh, that's the voltage level. And I have set the recording duration, or the capture duration as eight seconds. So once I run the code, I can capture the data there. Let me build here. So this is a new application directory I created for UART1TX on the apps. If you see here, this is the one same you would see in the GitHub repo as well. On the right side, I want to run the OpenOCD to connect to the 
connect to the board yeah so almost let me build okay I hope you can see this let me see if I can slightly put this up So the moment I continue here, and before that, I will just enable the capture. You can see some activity happening here, and it would capture for eight seconds, and then it would stop. Now let's uh, zoom in at the very start of the activity here. So enabled and this is the first start bit and what's the duration of this so this is like a, if you divide by 8 uh, roughly 8.68 this will be approximately 8 once that is because so start and two zeros here because this is three bits 3 into 8 this duration is roughly three times the 8.69 so after start there are two zeros and uh, eight ones now if you see what is the first white uh, we are transmitting it is f c here but which would be so in bitstream this would be like uh, six ones uh, followed by zero zero so that's why and when this is transmitted with the least significant bit first so this is the start of the start bit of the what and then as you see this is three bits so two zeros and there are uh, eight ones totally so here eight ones so six ones would correspond to this uh, byte whatever we transferred and the last two highs are for two stop bits okay and then because we configured with the uh, two stop bits so stop bits are high so it would be retained high so after that, then the next uh, transfer, the next data should have been, uh, what is the next byte, what we are transferring is F0. So the start byte, and this is like approximately, so five, so this is like five bits. So one start bit and four zeros, if you see this one, this should be, Okay. So out of this five bits, one uh, start bit and four zeros are here. Then you should see here again um, this width is six times the width of the bit. So that means six ones. So it's just like four ones and two start bit. That's right. And so you can see clearly that from the wave, so you see here the F has six ones followed by four ones. And you can see the high duration is here it is uh, wider and uh, less wide than the first byte and the lesser wide than the second byte, okay, and so on. But once we start transmitting inside the loop, it is the same pattern again and again. So, so far we have uh, verified roughly that the uh, waveform uh, matches with the initial three bytes, whatever we transmit through the uot one tx And we also, uh, verified that the bit duration in the waveform uh, which is roughly 8.69 microsecond matches with the baud rate whatever we have set on the uot one tx and uh, for the last byte which is a hexadecimal value bc which is transferred in a loop i have uploaded the snapshot of the waveform in this uh, github 
uh, repository if you go to the git repo and inside the apps and you want one tx you can see that is a raw image file which is uh, nothing but the capture of the waveform corresponding to the uh, repeated pattern of 0x pc and i have also marked the start and uh, stop bits so if you find uh, so download and uh, go through this and if you find anything is wrong please uh, raise a issue here or you can also provide your uh, comments or questions post your questions on the comment section of this okay and uh, please don't uh, forget to vote on the next uh, video session if you want uh, pwm or the what one uh, loopback or rtc okay so if you go to the youtube channel community page you will find the uh, polling so please uh, don't forget to vote on that okay thank you and uh, see you in the uh, next session